Welcome to the Kiwi Mana. Bye. Hi, welcome to the Kiwi Mana Buzz. This is podcast episode 93. Hi everyone and hello to you. This podcast is hopefully a helpful and handy chat about preparing for the bee season 2016. Yes, it's a special show about how to get ready for spring 2016 and we'll have our normal show in a couple of weeks. Yeah, that'll be it. So we're, uh, we're in the winter at the moment and it's yeah. quite cold tonight, isn't it? That's it, and we, you know this is being recorded in the West Auckland area on the Wild West Coast in Auckland, New Zealand. Yes, and our podcast is about beekeeping, gardening, and political issues sometimes, and also about our quest to earn a living of what from what we love. Oh, okay. I thought we were going off in tangents. Did you just have a little tangent there, Gary? Had a tangent. <laughs> Okay, so let, shall we start? Yes, absolutely. We've all been enjoying our winter break. It's been yeah. uh, very good and cold and we've been chopping firewood and enjoying the fire. Yeah, Gary's been doing some clearing around the property, so uh, yeah, those weeds are getting dealt to. Yes, we've been uh, using, mm. getting rid of some gorse, which is like a, a prickly plant that's, I think it's native from Scotland, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. It's flowering at the moment as it happens, but uh, the bees don't mind that at all. No, absolutely. And Snow hasn't been very well. She's had a uh, had a growth on her neck removed, so that's not too good. So she's l- yeah. But the good, good thing now. is, it's benign, so it's no issue. So we're very happy for that. At the moment, she's got six stitches and just under her on her neck. So, uh, but she's all good. So back to work, Gary. Yes, back to work. Yeah, so where are we now in uh, NZ? We are in the hills of the Wachaku Ranges. We've already said that. <laughs> <laughs> we are in the middle of winter, getting yes. ready for spring. Yeah, I feel a little panicked. Am I ready? But are you ready? I'm mm. ready. Um, don't know. Where are you at with your apron, Gary? My apron's going good. We had two... two Hives there, they're all treated. I haven't been there for a month or so, so I need to go back there and have a look. Yeah, we're not like um, some countries where everything freezes over, so our bees still keep foraging. So, uh, yeah, we'll have to go and check them out, eh? Yeah, I've noticed that the bees have been still been flying on on some of the days. So it's been awesome. But, yeah. Uh, our, our other apres not near our house, so we have to go and visit them. Yeah, so uh, we'll be doing that shortly and... Well, the reality is that we have now had the shortest day, so we are heading towards spring, and officially it's the 1st of September, obviously. So, in fact, it's now about six weeks till spring. Oh, my God. Ooh. Yeah, so I've, I've been updating the uh, swarm collectors list. We're going, to have a new, we're going to have a new swarm collectors list this year, so that's going to be exciting, isn't it? Yeah, if you guys want to join us, just give us a uh, email, send us an email with your contact details that people can ring you any time, and you're happy with us to share that detail, so yeah, get in touch. Absolutely. So it's going to happen quickly, eh? So it seems autumn, winter in our area is about a month late, but... Temperatures will start to increase probably in maybe three weeks. I think we should see some changes. And so that means it's time to get your gear built ready for increased population and swarming. And these are both natural occurrences for the honeybee in spring. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. The bees are going to be probably run going through their stores now, so you might find your your hives are very light at the moment. Yeah, we'll be covering that a bit further on. And um, obviously, if your queen has survived through winter, she'll be great breeding stock. So we're holding our breath and hope that our queens uh, get through. Okay, well, so what do you recommend for um, our beekeepers at this time of the year, Gary? So they keep their stress levels down. Well, I think maybe do some mite counts in earnest. Try and get some uh, mite counts done. I think monitor your mite levels, make sure they're okay. If you've got a mesh board, you can do that quite easily. Yeah, um, an assessment inspection is, is what I would recommend. Probably best on a dry, warmer, windless day. Absolutely. Don't want to break that cluster, I guess. It's too risky. And also make get your split gear ready, up ready for action. 
Um, also, maybe even consider talking about getting your swarm gear in action. So you've got all your your spare boxes ready for your splits and your swarms. What do you reckon? Yeah, I reckon it's a delicate process at this time of the year when winter's this, you know, cold and sometimes the wind, you might think it's a sunny day, but with that wind, it can create a chill factor so it can drop that temperature down. So you don't really want to be interfering with the um, cluster too much. But an assessment inspection will be, you know, what, what you were thinking, eh? Yeah, and perhaps later on. The other consideration is if you open the hives now, you break all the propolis, which which, which is, yeah. you know, getting all the drafts out of the hive for you. Good point. Mm. Okay, so you're saying do some non-invasive monitoring now, maybe some natural mite falls or maybe a sugar shake count if you can, um, if you're confident that the you know, the bees are going to be okay with that. Sugar shake will require that you open up the hive, so maybe not. If it's a cold day, maybe not, absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah, and just do some observations at the front, see what's going on. Yeah, that can give you indication of um, pollen stores coming in. It's hard to see the nectar side of things. Usually the abdomens are quite shiny in the sun. When you see them fly across, you can see that abdomens look a bit, like they're glowing um so yeah i think that is your queen laying that's the other sort sort of thing but i think maybe in about three weeks a eh, start looking into the end of july yep absolutely i mean it's it's been the weekend was very nice say eh? the weather was really nice but it was just it was quite cold and the bees were hardly flying weren't they yeah, they, they, they chose not to come out. And the other thing is, is that we're looking at a lot of rain. We've had a lot of rain, so, you know, that's taken a bit of food. So I think it would be ideal to get your treatments finished before the 1st of September so your girls go into into spring with the colony's health intact. And if you do four weeks of treatment, then you probably would have already started that. So you finished, oh no, probably... The beginning of Ju- uh, August, sorry. Got myself a little confused there. Bananas. <laughs> <laughs> and and if you're thinking about getting bees, then uh, you need to add yourself to the beginning waiting list, don't you? Yeah, we've got all, all those kind of things in place for those who want to get colonies. We don't know how many um, we'll be able to provide this year because this year is looking quite sad in terms of surviving colonies and you know I think the things you really got to look at at the moment is are your bees hungry you know how much food do they have make sure they're not getting robbed out entrance is really really small and if not a screen in front of that so um, I had two colonies which I fed but they just didn't respond so I had to merge them and leave the queens to fight it out that's risky but what do you recommend for something a weaker colony or a smaller colony, Gary? Um, if they've got no food, perhaps if you've got some um, some spare honey frames, you could put those in there. But sort of maybe sort of scour the outside of the um, honey so they can have that. Yeah, like use a capping scratcher to pierce the cappings. Yeah, just to give them a bit more of a hand and put that right near the brood. Yeah, just to give them some food. If they've got lots of food, just kind of. But Maybe not tr- in the middle of the brood, eh? <laughs> no, never break up the brood. That's right. The other thing is to do is if you've got heaps of empty boxes on them, um, take them off, reduce yeah. them down as you would do before you start a winter. Yeah, reduce right down. That's a really good idea. Maybe put them into a nuke box if they really are struggling. Absolutely. And, yeah, make sure that that nuke box is um, warm and dry, but it has to be in the same place. You don't want to lose any bees at this stage. No, not at all. And, and what you might mm. find if you've got if you're running two boxes of the Langstroth style boxes, you may find that all the bees have moved to the top and the bottom box is totally empty. Yeah, that's that's happening quite a bit with some of the calls I'm getting. So the idea is is move the one that's got the most bees to the bottom and either put a hive mat with a hole in it above them or just totally clean that that empty box so that they're all confined to one level and you've been having some inquiries about location of beehives and i've, I've actually had a question about moldy beehives too 
Well, mouldy beehives, uh, if the mould's black, then that, that can be a lot of viruses and bacteria. So that's a real bad thing. So we did have one lady who um, contacted us and said her hive was, you know, just really starting to get really weak. And so the the problem was is it was too damp. The hive was wet inside, so she moved it and that's been a positive result. So keep an eye on the dampness. Um, with a lot of the rain that we're getting in our area, um, the hives can get quite wet. So I've taped up the ones that have got little gaps here and there just to give them an extra help. So, uh, yeah. yeah and, and also hive stands, eh? Because the, the specific one I was talking about, the, the hive was on the ground. So oh, you, you yeah. get all that damp from the ground coming up. So Definite problem there. So we've... Got a little whiny dog in the background. She's not been quite herself lately. No, she's a very purely little dog. So what what kind of beekeeping tools do you reckon you should get for spring? Well, I think, as you said before, we're looking at getting split gearity, um, which is to cope with swarms. But I think, interestingly, once you split, you're looking at different things. You you know, when you split, you're giving the girls a brood break. You're also hopefully helping with um, preventing varroa growth because there's just nothing for them to feed on. So I think you want to get the extra gear ready like now, start building it and getting all your frames and stuff done. And my thoughts are that when you do start to think about splitting, you're probably looking at The best ones that we've had are when you have at least nine frames of bees. So those ones have been more successful and when the brood levels are at that level, they seem to cope better and you try and get it done so that they will survive. So yeah, get everything in place. You know, you were talking about location of beehive. Do you need a hive stand? Is it too wet where you are? The um, rain splash up is always a, a real nuisance because once it gets in, it's going to be um, create a real damp place. Going to buy a nucleus or a fully working hive? How do you want to keep your bees? Yeah, as you see, what sort of beekeeping gear, what tools, what hive wear will get through the seasons, and yeah, that kind of thing is everything you need to consider. So, what about you, Gary? What sort of stuff do we usually use through the seasons? Through the seasons, well, for hive wear, you've got your boxes, obviously. You've got your frames. Uh, we use medium brood wax foundation sheets. We find them the best for yeah, for right. general brood and for honey. And they they can actually, you know, make some changes with that. If you want it to be a bit wider, you could put half wax sheets in and then they'll raise their own wax at the bottom which they may choose to make it larger yeah absolutely or they can go foundationless we're looking at a new product that that's coming out in spring so that totally requires a, yeah, a lot of work but you know it's it's a real personal choice at the moment my um top bar hive is doing really well and um yeah they are still going great gun so you just never know but you know you need to pick it right when you start doing them you know encouraging them drawing their own foundation so mm. absolutely and obviously you need a hive mat or a crown board in england they call that um and a roof baseboard queen excluder yep. yeah it's useful for splits eh? Yeah, I think the hive wear that I would look at is, as you said, was, um, you know, you want to get those wax sheets and frames in place. We've got eyelets, which can help with stopping the wire from cutting into the frame. Yes, a very good system. And I saw a video the other day from you, and you said it's old-fashioned. Well, I did, because I I have... (laughs) Yeah, I'm always in a hurry, so that's my excuse. And that's the other thing to tell people. We've, yeah, got, a, we've got a video. A come, little video. It's coming out too. <laughs> okay. You'll see Margaret talking about eyelets. Yeah, but, you know, I, I don't use them myself, and I think that's the point Gary's trying to <laughs> But, you know, it is a it is a, a way that older beekeepers used to do because they were very 
involved with cleaning frames and getting them rewired. So it's very helpful for that. Yeah, and I think it makes it easier when you re- reuse the frames like the next season. It's much easier to put the wire Absolutely, back. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, tools, I think you definitely have to have a hive tool, don't you? Absolutely. I love my Kiwi hive tool and it's the bestest hive tool ever. In the whole and world in the video, you said. Oh, well, no. In the whole world in the video. In the video, you said it's the best hive tool in the whole world. I believe it is. I love it. I think it's just so easy to use. And I and my frame holder makes it so easy, you know, and less damage to the frames. And I can also put them on the frames on the frame holder and inspect the cells. So That's that right. makes it so much easier. And a part of what you do in New Zealand, you have to inspect your hives for disease. So, you know, you want to make it as easy as you can for yourself, guys. And in the video, there's a blooper because you dropped the hive tool. That's right. I dropped it on my slippers. <laughs> <laughs> I think your slippers don't appear in the movie. Oh, that's all right. Some then. tactful editing. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. And you uh, use a, a brush is good for also, for, especially for moving bees where you want them to, when you're uh, yeah. moving honey or... Yeah, absolutely. I, I call it a bee tapper. It should be called a bee tapper because I think brushing it gives an indication that you just give them a good sweep, but... Don't do that, guys, because you'll damage the wings and you really just want to put it behind where the bees are and then move them along, just gently tapping the, the brush as it goes and the bees understand that you want them to move a certain way. So that's how I use that and, uh, yeah. And the capping scratch is good, isn't it, for taking the cappings off and for checking drone cells? Yeah, and I, I love to use a capping scratcher because it, can not damage the cells too much so that the bees can rebuild it or cover it back over when you're checking larvae health and that kind of thing and yeah i really love my capping scratcher yep and i think a smoke is really important yeah uh, that's a must-have um got some on a slow boat from china coming now haven't we (laughs) pretty much somewhere over there (laughs) i'm not sure it's china though no not not china but somewhere other gear i recommend I think you need to have some kind of veil or a jacket. Yeah, I, I won't work my bees without out cover. I mean, if I go in and start working my bees, then I just don't want my face to get stung and I'm not happy to not be covered up. But isn't isn't bee venom good for beauty a beauty regime these days? Well, some people may not need it. <laughs> You know, just saying, just saying. It's true. And I, I, I personally think bee venoms are evil, making bees, like, sting things for Oh, that, Are you going off on a tangent? I am going off a tangent, so I think you should wear it. It's bananas. A, you should wear a veil because it's not much fun being stung on the face. As or someone your eyes. that's had it done. And the next day you go to work, it looks like you've been fighting in the street, so you don't want that. <laughs> And gloves, I think gloves are important. Um, you, you can you can get away with not wearing them, but sometimes you just get stung on the thing when you get tired. So yeah, and it's a personal weird. choice. I found that when I get stung on my hands, it's always it swells up quite a bit because it's quite near to muscles and that kind of thing. Yeah, so it can swell up quite heavily. And that's a good point. Here's a tip: if you wear rings. Don't wear them when you go beekeeping because if you get stung on your finger, it might swell up so much you can't get the ring off. Handy to know, Gary. Yes, yes, indeed. These are this, this, our podcast is full of handy hints. That's right, guys. And uh, yeah, I think that's all. I think if you had those things, you'd be you'd be pretty set. Yeah, yeah. And if you're doing your split gear, make sure you got all the hive wear ready. And if you're doing swarms, you can use some older frames that you're not too worried about losing, just in case they do have AFB. Yeah. But um, yeah, you can use older frames for that as long as they're clean in terms of disease and. Yeah, you want to have everything ready for the girls to just be moved in and then they'll start drawing straight away. So you're looking at roofs, baseboards, hive mats and queen excluders when you're ready to do your splits. Yeah, and obviously you need bees too and we've talked about that already. So you've got to have bees to be a beekeeper, otherwise you're just a keeper. A <laughs> keeper of air. A <laughs> keeper of hive wear. But yeah. that, absolutely I agree with you, Margaret. Always have... Always, always, always have a complete hive set up 
as a spare for your splits or for when your bees swarm. Because yeah. the amount of phone calls we get in spring saying, my bees are in the rose bush. Gotcha. What do I do? <laughs> yeah, and I think that um, normally what happens is that the new colonies will be growing around September, October. So probably not ready till around November, December. You're probably looking at about, you know, 40 days to really have a colony built up enough. Um, some of the smaller colonies, people sell them in five frames in the nuke box. So, that, you know, you just want to make sure you're getting something really good then. And always inspect your product before you pick it up. Absolutely. And education's also good. Uh, I'm currently reading the... Uh Honey Bee Democracy by Tom Seeley. It's a great little book. And as an introduction to world of beekeeping, what's this about? Yeah, we're looking at putting a um, My First Spring, uh, preparations of a short course. So if you're interested in that, guys, you can email me at info at uh, Kiwimana or you can just go on our waiting list for the next bee course and we will um, just send you uh, information when we've got those dates set up. And that's under education, isn't it, on the on the blog? That's it, Gary. Fantastic. And, and also you'll find the Practical Beekeeping Guide for New Zealand, which is a great book for anyone, even not New Zealanders. Yeah, and it's good to have it on hand, I think. it's That uh, is helpful. So if you really are concerned about something, you can have a look through that um, or you can ring us. Absolutely. Okay, so um, you might have finished your full year of beekeeping. So you've had bees during the year and you got them last year and they've now come through winter. So you might be in the mood to go and um, do your DECA certification. And there's a lot of those courses available this year and you can check out the AFB website and I've put a link on it for you there. And um, they do it in lots of different areas this time. So it's time to to think about that, guys, because now you know what is normal you need to understand that uh, if your bees got through now, you need to understand that if you can do your own DECA certification, you don't have to fill out too many forms. And they've got to be, the forms got to be done by November, don't they, the DECA check ones? Yeah, all your DECA checks, and we do do them, it's through our beekeeper services on our online shop, so easy absolutely. peasy. Absolutely, we'll have to get those back on the site because it's... Absolutely, they will be on before spring. That's right, we'll be looking at getting that done and yeah, you've got a bit of time for that guys, so don't panic. Yeah, Remember, if... be prepared, don't panic, okay. Absolutely, and what's this about, do you have back issues? Yeah, well, yeah. You when do? You're, when you're planning or starting your beekeeping adventures for this season, bee season 2016, You've got to look at lots of different options and, and you know, you might have back issues or you might uh, want to see something new and exciting. Well, we have something that may help. Awesome. And this is in the video too, isn't it? What, yes, what, it what is. is it? It's, um, well, it's called the Lifestyler, the Kiwi Lifestyler. And maybe it's something you guys could have a look at. It's called our new long bench hive and it's the kiwi lifestyle an awesome way to keep bees with ease and it's a deluxe year-round beehive so um check that out guys and we've put a link to the article that you can have a read about that and photos so you can have a good look at it and then we'll tell you a bit more about it as you yeah as we go along and my my feeling about it is less weightlifting more beekeeping (laughs) You'll That's see why. It. Yeah. Because it, it, the beauty of it is you only need to lift one frame at a time. You're not lifting huge boxes anymore. Yeah, beekeeping with ease. And good for the knees. <laughs> Your hips, <laughs> if you don't want to lift. Yes, you need to check out Margaret's product page. It's got so many puns, it's it's hilarious. It's wonderful. It? So it's absolutely a- awesome, guys. And, yeah, seriously, it's a new, new product, a new way to keep your um, – Bees, one box all year round and easy, achievable maintenance and management and uh, monitoring. So it's, it's fantastic. So have a look at that link, guys. Absolutely. And I know there's a few people already keen to buy them. People yeah, that are like, yeah. especially a lot That's of it. people that don't want to lift huge boxes anymore. So, yeah, it's a definite 
product you should have a look at, guys, and um, maybe changing changing what you're doing now because of certain health issues that you're, you're facing. This might m- stop you from um, making too many bad decisions by getting a, a beehive like this. So, uh, yeah, Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to that, and I'm hoping that's uh, going to be great. Yeah, so check out our online shop, guys, for any of your gear. If we don't have something available, just email us and we will get in touch with you at info at kiwimana.co.nz if you want to question us about anything because this time of the year things sell pretty quickly. So uh, just get in touch if there's any issues with the online shop. So, yeah, it's all awesome. So we wish you all the best. Yep, I hope your spring preparations are going well and we will be doing our preparation. So this is just a quick little update from us. And uh, yeah, it's good, great to talk to you. Cheers, guys, and be prepared.